Hello, this is Craig from Ultra Real Assets. This is going to be an overview of the uh, new alpha features for uh, mesh tools for SurfForge. Uh, this is a uh, this is going to be a demo of the uh, creating runtime meshes with SurfForge uh, using the actual models that SurfForge generates uh, for the texturing and converting them into models you can use in your game. So uh, to start this process, um, you first need to create a series of models using SurfForge itself. Uh, for example, this is a, uh, a scene that is uh, generated using SurfForge's uh, lasso tools and detail objects and, uh, and whatnot. And uh, I've, I've built them uh, in a way that they're like 3D models you would use in a game. Some of the detail objects and stuff in SurfForge are not going to be appropriate because they have odd, uh, they're, they're designed to have undercuts and stuff that are supposed to make it appear like uh, there's an inset within the mesh. Uh, that's not going to work for a uh, runtime object. Um, as you experiment with the tool, you'll see what works and what doesn't work. Um, so, uh, so now that I have this, I want to make sure we go into the hierarchy and that uh, under the root where SurfWord stores all of these objects it generates, uh, by uh, by default, it's going to when you create yours, it's not going to be nice and neat like this. It's going to be have all the lasso objects and detail objects all paired to the root. In order for this uh, this process to work, you need to break all of these lasso and detail objects into uh, grouped uh, objects. Like I've got parent or panel zero. I just made a game object in here and then an empty game object and called it panel zero and then parented all the lasso objects and elements to it. Uh, we need to do this to because this is going to save all this out as one object that we can then apply our texture to uh, and then use it in runtime. So um, I've got all these separated into different different grouped parented groups of SurfWorge elements. Uh, now that I've done that I just want to select, I just need to select the first one shift and select the last one, right click and click the uh, Ultra Real Assets SurfForge save as real time or runtime mesh. Now it's going to go through and convert all of these message. Um, I don't have a progress bar set up just yet so um, it's going to look like Unity is frozen. Just wait it out, it'll eventually release it and, and work correctly. Okay, now that we generated our meshes, we need to generate a texture that these meshes can use. So I'm going to take the uh, uh, texture here that it's generated and uh, make sure it renders it. And I'm going to set its res to 4096. And, uh, and then I'm going to export it to... Uh, I've already exported one here. Uh, let me try uh, this. We're going to go under Assets. Uh, I'm going to go under uh, my demo here and I'm going to call it uh, runtime texture. That's fine. So it'll save it out. And uh, give it a minute, our textures will show up. Okay, so here's our runtime texture or our, our texture generated. Now there's a few features in here we don't need. Uh, we don't need the uh, normal map or the height map. And uh, I didn't use any uh, emission. You can, but I didn't use any. So I'm going to delete the emission. So uh, the only three textures we need are the albedo, the occlusion, and the specular. So uh, now that that's done, I'm just going to go and create a new scene. And I'm going to take and highlight all these new meshes it generated, drag them out into the scene view. And then with all of them still selected, I'm just going to take that new material and I'm going to put it into the materials here. And uh, then you can take and you know separate all these and look at them. They're going to look a little muddy at first only because the uh, if the uh, uh, real-time GI hasn't kicked in, um, the textures will look uh, a little weird. They eventually kick in. I still haven't figured out exactly what causes the real-time GI to kick in. Uh, it, it seems to be uh, completely random, so it may look like this for a while, but eventually it'll, it'll, it'll kick in and they'll look like what you expect them to look like. In fact, these are, yeah, I think this is probably correct. Um, let me take a look here. Oh yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not muddy. It's just the, uh, it's just the environment. 
that our, our lighting is in here. So uh, you can go to lighting too if you want to look at these and uh, uh, take and change the uh, the map and use the uh, Surforge's uh, environment elements as well here. So let's see if I can get a nice bright one. Yeah, there we go. There's a good one. All right. So there you can see that the um, the surfaces are applied correctly, and these will will work at runtime. Uh, now, um, what I typically like to do is I will take these objects now, and I've got a prefabs directory. I will just take in one by one, drag these all in here, and create prefabs out of them. Oh, nope, nope. Uh, create prefabs out of them. So uh, let's see, go through and just one by one. Okay, I finished converting them all to prefabs. Uh, make sure you uh, take and uh, move these into a more relevant folder because we probably don't want them sitting out in the uh, root. So I'll drag these in here. And now we've got prefabs that we can use in our game. And uh, they will look exactly the same as runtime as they do here.